Hey everybody, it's Wumbo Myco here with a video on substrate formulation. I'm not going to speak on everything about substrate formulation in this video, and if you want more details, recipes, or anything else, please visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash wumbomyco. The substrate I'll be making today is a cocoa coir and straw substrate. Um, so I'll basically just be adding one bag of loose coir to my bin. Uh, one bag of loose coir is roughly the same as an 11 pound brick of uh, compressed coir. And uh, I don't generally measure out the amounts that I use in my substrates. Um, I sort of just eyeball everything 60 40, 60% 60 coir, 40% straw. Um, aside from that, I'm going to be adding some supplements as well, um, as well as some recycled cardboard. Um, so the supplements you're going, you're not going to see necessarily, but the supplements are an organic nitrogen fertilizer, like a fish fertilizer or a seaweed fertilizer, a urethritol, which is a, a sugar, a plant sugar, and um, azomite as well, which is just trace minerals. All of those supplements will be added to a bucket and diluted in water so that they mix easily into my substrate. Along with all of the nutrients, I'm going to also add my chopped up cardboard to the water so that it can soak, become more pliable, uh, delaminate, and also mix easier into the substrate. When using cardboard as recyclable substrate materials, you really do not want to use any cardboard that was used for food packaging. Food packaging cardboard is often lined in plastic. Uh, I do highly recommend if you ever buy any paper packaging for food, to look for food paper packaging that is coated with PLA plastic rather than polypropylene or something along those lines, because PLA plastic will compost. Take off any stickers, do not use any fully printed in color uh, boxes, and, and if you follow all of those steps, you are very likely to avoid most of the hazardous materials associated with cardboard. I find that chopped straw is amazing for substrates, but it is an extraordinarily messy substance. I personally never want to chop straw, um, so I buy it in these bales. These bales are $14 and they will last you quite a long time. It is very messy, so you're going to want to wear a mask. Here in this video, I'm simply just putting my shirt over my nose so that I'm not getting particles of straw up my nose. But you do want to avoid breathing this. Um, since I was short a mask today, I simply put my shirt over my face. Because the dry materials can be so dusty, you are going to want to slow, slightly hose down all of your materials just to wet them before mixing them. Mixing substrate with your hands is fairly easy so long as you don't have to do too much in bulk. Here I am able to complete about 35 fruiting bags worth of substrate with my hands in about 20 minutes. If you do require uh, to do more substrate than this all at once, you are going to want to look into a cement mixer, uh, maybe even a ribbon mixer if you really want to do a lot. Here after the initial mix, I'm just going to dampen it a little bit more and then add my stock water solution which will have my nutrients and my cardboard in it. And after all this, it's just going to need one more mix, and we are going to do our final hydration check after this mix, and that'll tell us if we need to add any more water or not. Now that the substrate is basically fully mixed, uh, we are going to just spray down the substrate a little bit to make sure we have nice and even moisture content, as I've determined it needed more water. Every once in a while you're going to want, after mixing it, you're going to want to take a handful and try and make sure you're getting a handful that has a little bit of substrate from maybe the bottom and the top or you know one area and another area. And you're going to want to squeeze it to see how much water beads at your fingertips or drips out of the substrate. For me personally, I really like a bit of a moist substrate, so I allow um, not just a couple of drops, but 
uh, almost a small, uh, tiny little stream of drops to come out as I squeeze it. You don't want it to be just raining water from the substrate, but uh, after testing moisture content, I would say it's almost on the upwards of 75% moisture content. If you'd like to know more about why I chose these substrate items, how I classify them, and how you can build your own substrate, go check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching.